So next up, um, let's look at some of the, the go-to-market go strategies. And, and again, these are uh, to give ideas and these are generalized um, basic stra strategies and think thinking uh, without going too much into any specific business model or any specific industry or market or so forth. So more about scaling perspective and if we think about scaling it, it means that we are looking at um, uh, global market, we are looking at, at, uh, at going going bigger. Uh, so then, therefore let's look at the strategies of, that come out of that. So a, a born global is a, is a concept where uh, and, 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 a, and a terminology used for companies that don't take uh, that that don't take the typical organic growth path and the traditional way how businesses have grown historically in the past uh, in, a, in, a, in a longer history perspective where first you do your own home market and then you grow there as big as you can and then you start slowly to open a new market perhaps a, a neighboring country or countries and you will establish offices there and you 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 grow that way and then the next country and so forth but born global is of course specifically with everything that internet has brought and all the digital business opportunities is that you will look to build uh, it can be even a quite niche product uh, to a, a, a specific need, but in a very global way. So this creates this whole uh, different uh, dimension of, of how to think uh, global business. So it doesn't mean that you have to have a big business to do global business. And that's where the, the terminology comes from. So born globals are business organizations that have just a global mindset from the very inception and uh, aim to drive, uh, derive significant competitive advantage from the use of resources and the scale of outputs in multiple countries. So this is really to, to, to doing a big market uh, thinking and big market uh, not necessarily big market entry, but at least big market availability um, in, in, a, in, a, in a very globally minded way. So basically, born global firms begin exporting their products or in a, in a digital world, making the product available to, to uh, with a couple of years after their founding and, and really maturity of that business uh, at least a significant portion of that comes from uh, businesses outside of their home market. And that's where the, the term exporting uh, comes. And typically this also involves more open models and more, more uh, strategic models for, for partners and, uh, and investments and so forth. So here's from uh, uh, Gabrielson, Gabrielson research uh, or, or uh, document about this from uh, from a uh, from a past, just kind of describing this uh, born global uh, growth thinking. So the internationalization uh, and globally globalization uh, aspects and really how how a, a size of a company uh, develops. So it's getting very quickly into this internationalization phase at very early stage and then really looking at that globalization to spread and, 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 and blanket more of the markets very, very fast <clears throat> as, it, as it grows. And basically uh, this gives also a perspective with the thinking of really getting into that global mindset and global operations uh, very early on and not, not so much of that internationalization one market at a time perspective. So if we think of, uh, of, of 
born global and really um, like making your products available. So there's there's two aspects of this um, that that will go through. That is the, the the key key strategy. One thing, of course, is to try to get to all markets, to try to sell to all markets. So that's obviously clear that as a small company, you, you simply can't do that. You can't make yourself present everywhere. You can't make your uh, products and services that fit to all of the different cultures on all of the different languages and so forth in the early on. So you still need to choose the markets that you proactively go after. Uh, or that you proactively support, uh, but at the same time, you should not limit your uh, product or your business growth potential by clearly excluding some of the markets simply because you assume that the customers, that you need a better product or you need a, uh, a certain model to, to, to even have customers. So basically it means that that uh, make your product globally available, make it as neutral as possible in a general level, and then con consider separately where do you do more uh, targeted market activities and, and more features and functions that support specific country, language, culture, and so forth. But at the same time, don't block your product away from those who are uh, foreigners living in another country or they are uh, willing to and interested or even used to buying products online with with uh, with, with uh, some of the common languages or or if the same language is used in multiple countries then that's 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 easier um, but really uh, think of it that way that like imagine if google would have when they came up with the service that they would only make that uh, search engine available in their own country. And when you try to type google.com, it just says not available in your country. That, that would be basically exactly like not really considering so that anyone can at least access and use the product, but you may then communicate that we are providing some limited support of that. And I, I, I guess in a global business, a lot of us experience that of, for example, in certain media, what media is available that to like try to watch some movies or videos and they basically are not available in your markets or you start to look uh, some products that you want to buy online and then they don't deliver to your country and so forth. So all of those are basically coming from the old world and uh, the old ways of how business was think, uh, businesses were considered, but uh, in the in the modern world, uh, at least uh, the direction is clear, and a growing majority is is expecting to get uh, anything that is available somewhere that that they they don't understand why wouldn't it be uh, available also elsewhere. So then the consideration is how can you make it available or at least uh, at what level can you make it available elsewhere. But that's a different consideration than, than uh, what you are proactively, what market you are proactively going after, where you put more effort behind to actually get customers from that specific market. And uh, there are even uh, cases like, for example, Facebook and any of these big ones uh, and even some of the less known companies that have got like just random surprising growth from a country that they have never even heard or they have never considered. And then they just look at the statistics or KPIs and they wonder why is our product so successful in, in that kind of market. And, and there can be just that there has been some um, media coverage or it may be that there's a just a, a, a lucky match with the culture aspect or something that is common in certain countries' culture, why a certain product resonates very well in a country that it was never really uh, designed for. <clears throat> so these are the types of aspects that, that, uh, that, that you should have strategies in place. And when we look at the Born Global versus the inter internationalization and, and 
basically with this we mean that uh, being globally available versus the intended proactive expansion by country by country or market by market. So, of course, it's about uh, its countries have their different scenarios, so whether they're developing countries or they're more, more mature countries or whether they're more innovative or whether they're more conservative regions. Uh, there's appearance on the on the products and services. There's the mindsets of people, how they consider certain types of services, who they would buy them from. Then, of course, the language considerations, cultural considerations, uh, even things like internet access speed, or let's say also a latency. If your ser service is provided from a country very far along, the, the, the online service may be very slow in a country where they're accessing it. Um, it's also whether what kind of uh, devices and technologies they have available, what are the preference uh, use models for type of service that you're using, whether it's more an office desktop setup or whether it's uh, more mobile, it may vary uh, even culturally. Uh, for example, in some of the countries, people use Facebook for, for everything and don't really use LinkedIn, for example. And in some countries, you wouldn't mix uh, LinkedIn and the business profiles and behaviors with your Facebook behaviors and, and so forth. Uh, so that just gives an, a sense of, of the type of market setup that is different in a, in a different country. So even if you would try to do business communication and use LinkedIn and you're getting good results for that in a certain market, then on another market you may actually learn that nobody is there from that country, but everyone's also conducting business in Facebook or in, in their Facebook uh, profiles. So um, also considerations of how you support with local teams. So the people who talk the local language, understand the local culture, uh, and how, how would you support business there. Uh, and these are more the considerations of how much support you provide or just simply making the product also available. Time zone considerations like how can you effectively operate the business or where you uh, can effectively support the business considering where your team is mainly located at, uh, how can they support customers in a totally opposite time zone. So, so these types of considerations you, have, you start to have with, uh, with the global aspect. And then the management models, how do you manage um, the, 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 the growing aspect and specifically also from this uh, global perspective. So while in principle, uh, and in practice also making something uh, uh, born global or making global business is actually on one hand it's much easier than many think but at the same time it includes these different aspects that also many don't think. So, so this just means that it's good to have a, a certain strategies in place that take into account the opportunities and uh, possibilities to let the company grow and scale to different markets and find uh, interesting opportunities versus then the, the, the strategy of what markets are we proactively going after. So if we think um, the, the, the mindset, how to build the mindset for born global, so, so traditional is internationalization business aspect and more traditional business thinking usually have started that of course you have your own home market and, uh, and in the beginning you focus on your own home market and servicing them and then you have made perhaps uh, some uh, foreign language or, or more common global language pages available to make your products and service available also for others but you haven't really considered their customer experience or their user experience of uh, using or accessing your service or product or products 
uh, from from your lo location because you're also your own mindset is very much shaped shaped by the the, the local business that you are doing in, in one market. So that's that's kind of how you are how how, how a traditional business may be thinking and. There are a lot of you would be surprised how many businesses there are in the world that actually don't do any business outside of their home country and they don't even deliver any of their products or services to another country. There's, 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 I don't know for a fact, but I would say majority of companies are like that. Or if they have, it's a very side activity how they do the international business. Or even if they have it, then the user experience or customer experience may be so bad that even if they want the product, it's it's almost impossible for them to get it. Now then the other aspect of this is of course that if you really start to think of okay, let's go to let's go international, let's go to different markets. So then it becomes a question of okay, to what markets do we go? Okay, to what group of countries or what set of countries are we supporting? How are we getting there? How do we have resources to support it? All the different considerations, but this is still starting from the mindset that you are physically somewhere, that you are a country X based company and you are country X uh, based um, brand and image and so forth. And that's also something that uh, you have to separate, or it makes sense strategically to separate and consider <clears throat> does the, the country label give you benefit or not uh, to associate it with your business and business communication. So it's, it's not automatic that it actually is beneficial, but at the same time you want to make sure that, that uh, you are getting benefits whatever your country is offering and uh, what they are supporting. Uh, businesses that are based in your country and growing out of the country uh, that you are in. But when you're building a global business, at least over time, uh, you should be shopping around uh, the same way for the country of where the business uh, makes sense to be present, like you would choose your mobile operator. It shouldn't be that much different. If you're building a global company, think of what type of country gives the best kind of uh, uh, support and profile that supports your business, considering the type of business you have. Certain countries and certain regions have certain profiles where, where depending on the type of business you're doing, may be ben more beneficial uh, to, to, to represent that kind of uh, country profile. At the same time, um, you can still be setting up operations in any country you feel where your team wants to live or where you think, think there's the best talent available for that and so forth. So think of these in, in, in different aspects. And for communication, you can make your company uh, location-based appearance very neutral. You don't have to communicate it strongly. You can look at uh, many of the global companies, the bigger ones, and even some of the board global smaller ones, uh, how they do their, their uh, communication about where their businesses are actually operated from or where they're based from. If, it, if there's a clear benefit from what country they are coming from, they usually are using it stronger. If there is not, then usually it, you, you may even have to find and look deeper into the documents of about pages or company history or uh, even terms and conditions to see what is the actual legal entity and where they are located at. This mainly is, of course, for the digital services uh, side. And, of course, now if you would have uh, this type of traditional export or internationalization perspective, uh, now you are having, of course, inbound so requests that you are getting from the markets and then you have the, the proactive side where you proactively are trying to read certain customer base or build your market presence more in the specific countries. But what really helps uh, in a mindset way is that to 
really separate your business uh, uh, from the location or any location where your business is officially registered or where your team members are based or where your operations are based or where your product development is based into this kind of that your business is global, your business is on the cloud, it's on the internet and then you have different aspects of where should the company headquarters be and why it should be in that country and what benefits does it have, uh, where is the product growth, where are the customers, the markets, where should be our support centers if we have physical support, where should our team grow uh, over time. And these are all considerations that you should have at the very early part when you're starting to scale your business. So don't just let these things happen and come what they become. Don't just let you know, don't just make these decisions based on gut feeling or at the time when you have to make those. Have a strategic consideration and evaluation of these different things um, in the beginning of your growth. Make changes if you need to, uh, but at least have a guideline there, <coughs> uh, a, a, a documented thinking behind your expansion plan um, and, and having this born global mindset that your business is not automatically tied to any specific location but every specific activity in your business and location should have business rationale behind it why it is located in a certain country. Of course it can also be as simple as founders just saying well I'm living here I want my business to be here that's the end of the story and uh, that's enough because of course you have your own um, um, rationale for each of the decisions and that's a totally fine as well. But if you are looking to build then a scalable business and you are involving a lot of uh, other parties, partners, investors, big customers, then you have to take their, their, their um, concerns or their questions and their needs also into consideration. Uh, and then it becomes much easier if you just think what is best for the business and you think, uh, think from that perspective and not from your personal perspective uh, alone. So have a rationale, have a logic in place, have some kind of guidelines and basic, basic rationale that should come also partly or at least be aligned with your mission and vision and strategy, how you think about the market markets that you are uh, going after. So getting to, to, to very basic um, categorizing and thinking of the market and specifically from the customers and, and growth perspective, uh, just divide it in the simple three categories, the primary one, the secondary and the rest. And the, the primary market is your priority and basically that's where you put, let's say, I don't know, uh, it's up, up, up to you to define, but whether that's more than 50%, 70%, 80%, but you should put majority of your focus uh, into that uh, priority markets. So that's where you proactively try to do, where you proactively build network, that's where you proactively uh, localize your products and services, where you proactively uh, try to build team and resources where you proactively do these things, where you proactively invest money or uh, use of resources. The secondary priority markets is still on your own focus. It's basically the, 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 the countries and markets where you put some effort, whether that's 20%, uh, 30% overall to all of those uh, second priority markets. You look at them, you try to see the signals, you, you are very paying attention to those, you may do some resource allocation per, per, per country in these secondary markets uh, or per city and you look at uh, what kind of traction you get and if you get some stronger signals you may actually move them into your priority markets and at the same time in your 
priority markets, you may actually, if you even if with uh, all the efforts you're trying to do, you clearly see that some of the, the secondary um, uh, priority markets are actually performing better. You may change these, uh, but basically you should have these considerations. And then the rest is all of the countries that you basically feel so unlikely or you have evaluated that these are the countries that we are not putting really any effort behind uh, to find customers there and so forth. But you're still making the product or service available for them because at least that way uh, you get some signals out of those, those markets and you can those signals can indicate to you that maybe you move them to the secondary uh, priority markets and, and start looking them a bit more. But if you don't have this type of categorization, then basically you are missing, missing, uh, missing the, the, the tool to have any kind of logic behind how you look at the markets. So this is a simple categorization uh, for, for, for your markets. And then you can also apply different strategies uh, to each of these in, in different ways. So, for example, uh, you can apply licensing model in the least important markets. So it means that in addition that you let customers buy, you could actually let another company license your product or service or you could allow them to uh, even register the, the company under your name and brand locally and give them rights to run the business because you wouldn't be running the business anyway. It's not your primary and secondary market. So basically this would allow you to grow in the markets and get some portion of that business and get brand building and so forth without putting your own resources in place simply because you have made that opportunity available for others. Maybe it's because you feel it's a totally different culture or very difficult culture. You don't have anyone supporting that language uh, in a big market, uh, whatever that may be. But if, 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 if you don't make these types of opportunities available to others, then it's 100% uh, sure that it's very unlikely that anything of that nature could emerge. It can still happen. Uh, that some entrepreneur in another country sees that, oh, that's very in interesting uh, business model, uh, business and product they're running. Let's ask if they would be willing to, to let us operate a business like that in our country. Uh, in, the, in the second priority category, for example, uh, you could be uh, using more uh, more freely the, the type of equity from the uh, equity and earning from someone to some team members to build the business in a specific country compared to compared to how much you would share ownership in the in the global business as a whole so you could have different tools uh, also at the compensation models you could give uh, certain IPR rights to bigger companies more flexibly in, in specific secondary category uh, country, perhaps not uh, to run entire business, um, but at least you could, you could be more flexible in those countries. And, and, and then on the primary markets, you use your own best people, the, 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 the global resources, um, the, the, all of the latest learnings and so forth. But at the same time, while you are focusing on the primary markets with your resources, you are still looking to get growth out of these other markets, but with a very different strategy and uh, much less of an involvement with the businesses like that. And also it's not as crucial if you fail in those markets, but you can still get learnings from those markets. Uh, but if you just think that you only have primary path and primary countries that you are going to execute, it, that you are going to blanket the whole country with your own people and resources, then you're not really thinking as a, as a born global in that sense. Because regardless of who tries to do that and scale the organization, it takes significant resources and still takes significant time to ever reach that kind of scale.
But if you have strategically other types of opportunity, now you have uh, uh, you are making more opportunities available for your business and also for partners and others uh, how the business can grow. And you can learn from each of those and you can share the learnings uh, between these different models as well. So, of course, the licensing model is most common in the franchise business, for example, how like the, the, the hamburger chains or many other franchise, franchise businesses have spread the world. Uh, in many countries, uh, those are just licensed businesses and they are not actually operated by the, the, the founding entity. So it can be the whole country license or it can be individual store or individual product that is, is licensed that way. And then in all of this context, consider uh, the dimensions of course, geographical uh, markets. So whether specific countries or country regions or, uh, or global uh, regions, or you can think of certain countries with a certain language, where the certain language is one market. Uh, you can think uh, a lower end price points or higher end price point with different branding in the same with the same product. And uh, you can even think of like white labeling your technologies and, and so forth. And here, uh, really think of other entrepreneurs. So, for example, when 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 you as a new entrepreneur thinking of what type of business you would start, you could then actually consider that maybe I don't think of starting everything from scratch. Maybe I seek to see some of the growing startups already in the market, and maybe I can establish the local operation in my country. So there's many different aspects that make business sense, but are not really considered that often because um, because this aspect of building the whole, doing the scaling, doing the foreign global markets and doing these different strategies and how to build the organization are not that uh, much available uh, in this, this type of context of how the different strategies could be applied. So it's not only acquire investors and then spend investors' money and try to get your own people in every country to operate those businesses. There's much wider set of uh, strategies and tools that can be considered on how to scale the business effectively. And it's on certain ways the same tools as what we covered in the, in the first module, how to build the founding team. So you could consider how would be a founding team with local equity ownership from local operations established in a different country. So certain type of learnings you already would have how to do that from establishing your own uh, entity in the beginning. And you already know how to work with entrepreneurial people if you've managed to get this far with your establishing the, the operations. <clears throat> 